you think those issues, whether you think there's cowardice, I mean, do you agree with Douglas that to some extent they're just focusing on a little thing because they don't want to talk about a big cultural war between Muslims and, and, and the West? Do you or? know what? I think we do need to take a moment just to step back and imagine for women all around the country and all around the world what it's like to sit on a beach building sandcastles with your children and have four policemen stand around you with handguns and make you take your top off. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out a video where Douglas Murray School a Muslim woman are wearing the cap and wearing the burkina in France. I believe this is going to be an interesting one. So let's take it out. Go. Well, joining me in the studio is Shalina Jan Mohammed, author of Love in a Headscarf and Generation M. Uh, and from our Oxford studio, Douglas Murray, associate editor of The Spectator. Thank you both for coming in. Shalina, you apparently have a burkini. I do. It's an open secret. I've got one. It just looks like a long t-shirt with a pair of leggings and a swimming cap on but top. Um, did you know it was going to be such an important statement of any kind when you well, acquired it? It, or? it looks like a wetsuit that people up and down the country wear, which we need in British waters because it's pretty cold, <laughs> or you need out in the south of France because it's really hot. So it's not really about the form of the bikini that seems to be at stake here. It's some kind of meaning that's being imposed on exactly. it. Exactly. And Douglas Murray, isn't that what all this is about? Um, and in fact, you've written about this saying it's a tokenistic thing to, to fixate on it. It's about the politics of picking on some symbol, however arbitrary, and making a big deal out of something relatively small. Well, indeed. I mean, uh, in the last 18 months, uh, more than 200 people have been killed in jihadist attacks in France. Uh, uh, in the last few days, it's come out from Germany that the German government is looking not only at advising the German people to stockpile uh, essential things like water in case of some mass casualty attack, but it's talking about conscription. And here we are with the summer's big uh, uh, story of French and indeed some German uh, politicians uh, competing to out idiot each other by talking about the burkini. This is uh, now a European tradition in the face of a genuinely uh, uh, serious societal problem uh, that radical Islam poses across all of Europe and obviously has its worst uh, um, demonstrations in extremist attacks like those in Paris and in Germany in recent months. In the face of that, uh, politicians compete with each other and the media compete with each other about really frivolous things. And the Burkini is a frivolous debate to be having. Not one life is likely to be saved by a woman being fined on a beach in Nice for wearing a burkini. And that's the reason why they're doing it is straightforward, uh, that neither politicians in France nor politicians in Germany, nor I would argue anywhere in Europe, are able to face up to the massive issues which they have brought about and which they now cannot okay. answer. Let's, let's talk about whether you think those issues, whether you think there's cowardice. I mean, do you agree with Douglas that to some extent they're just focusing on a little thing because they don't want to talk about a big cultural war between Muslims and, and, and the West? Do you or... know what? I think we do need to take a moment just to step back and imagine for women all around the country and all around the world what it's like to sit on a beach building sandcastles with your children and have four policemen stand around you with handguns and make you take your top off. I think everybody really needs to let that sink in. That is quite serious. It's and, why we're discussing it, because it is, it and, is but a thing. This is not about just Muslim women. When we have a state and we have police telling women what they can and cannot wear, then we are into very dangerous territory. And I'll tell you which other organisations tell women what to and what not to wear at the barrel of a gun, and that is Daesh and the extremists. And women everywhere should be protesting at this kind of behaviour. Right. I'm going to put something to you. The mayor of Cannes said he's a... He's actually had quite a lot to say about this because Cannes was the first city. He said, when I took the decision to ban people from walking topless in the streets of Cannes, nobody said a thing about human rights. Apparently he did stop people walking topless. He probably didn't also say that women who wanted to go for a swim were somehow pledging allegiance to a terrorist organisation. Yeah, that was his other quote. Yeah, he said it's, it's pledging allegiance. Look, um, Douglas, which is the better approach to the problem which you think exists the French approach that Sarkozy is promoting or the Anglo-Saxon approach that President Sarkozy now says he doesn't think is right because it means we ignore each other, we tolerate each other but ignore each other. 
Let me very quickly pick up on one of the things that's just been said before answering that, if I may, which is, uh, uh, of course, uh, the parallel that's just been drawn uh, uh, breaks down, doesn't it, when uh, we remember that the French authorities, grotesque as, uh, as this, I think we are in agreement, is, uh, do not then do to the women what ISIS and the Taliban do, which is to rape them and kill them. Uh, so it's a, a, a parallel that goes a certain way, but we have to keep this in some context. As for the, as it were, the competing uh, manners of dealing with it, the interesting thing is, Evan, that in the last 15 years, uh, uh, we have had so many manifestations of this. Something uh, blows up in London and people say, maybe we should look to the French model. And then uh, 130 people get gunned down in an evening in Paris and people say, maybe we should look uh, in France at the Norwegian model or the Swedish model or the German model. And the fact is now is that everybody realizes that none of the models have worked. None of them have worked. They've all broken down. None of them were any good. None of them were fit for purpose. So you see, when Sarkozy Josie now, purely for electoral reasons, obviously, says, oh, the Anglo-Saxon model uh, uh, of uh, people living uh, side by side parallel communities. Uh, look, if there weren't uh, a visual videographic evidence for it, I would suspect that Nicolas Sarkozy has never been to the suburbs of Marseille or has never been to any suburbs of Paris, because if he did go to them, he would see that precisely that parallel existence exists in France. I would argue worse than any other European country. But it's not really a question of who's done it really well and who's done it uh, really badly. Everybody has failed in the integration. Everybody has failed because immigration at the levels we've had it, and particularly at the levels that Chancellor Merkel has now pushed the continent into having Douglas? it, cannot possibly work. Douglas, uh, that, you, the point is understood. I wanted Shalina to get, to get a, a reply to that. Either model, the French model, the British model, or do you agree with Douglas that no model has worked, Shalina? The problem is when we try and stitch together ideas around immigration and what women should and shouldn't wear and the idea there's some kind of security and terrorism problem, then we are approaching the issue the wrong way. That's how we end up with policemen telling women to take their clothes off. What we need to think about is how do we enforce the rule of law to allow the citizens to flourish? And that has to be by allowing people to express their values and to participate in society. And if Muslim women want to do that by the way they dress, but actually being part of the public society, then we have to allow them to express that. That is the fundamental of why we live in a liberal democracy. Thank you both. I'm sure we'll get back to this topic before long. Wow. What an interesting debate. What an interesting interaction. Based on the facts and the points stated, I do agree that uh, the Muslim woman, to some extent i would say she she was intellectually honest to some extent based on the facts that she have stated i understand that uh you have to allow people to express their freedom you have to allow them to wear whatever they want to wear i understand that fact but i also understand uh the points douglas murray is trying to uh prove in this video we all know wearing the niqab Wearing the uh, the bikini, uh, the bikini, wearing the buka, we all know uh, is part of the Muslim culture. But I, for one, I feel that if it's not going to be uh, totally banned, at least it should be banned in certain places. Because I believe uh, certain places, before you come, let me say, you coming in into uh, a bank, or you coming into a courtroom, or you coming in into some public places. I believe they should be able to uh, 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 they should be able to take it off for security reasons. I believe they should be able to do that because sometimes when crime are perpetrated, to find the real victim of such crime is very difficult when uh, their face is covered or their face is totally covered. So I believe women should be allowed to uh, wear whatever they want to wear, and I also believe uh, the point that. This uh, culture is part of uh, the Muslim culture, and I believe it should be banned in certain places. If not, not totally banned, but it should be banned in certain places whereby uh, they need to see the whereby they need to see your face in order to be able to have a conversation with you. Places like, uh, let me say, places like the bank, places like the school, places like the courtroom whereby uh, to be able to communicate to you uh, in an effective way. Uh, they need to see your facial expression in order to be able to tell 
how the communication is going. So I'm not in support uh, that it should be totally banned, but I also believe that it should be banned uh, in certain places. And I believe uh, the point they mentioned about uh, the police uh, forcing women to to take it off, I believe uh, it's not, it's not, it's not, I, I, I don't see it as something good, but I also believe before the police we take their stand and make that decision to force women to take it off, I believe a law must have been passed, a policy must have been passed to stop women from putting it on at certain places before the police people can take actions like that. So you telling me that uh, a policeman uh, is forcing is forcing uh, some Muslim women to take off the buka or to take off the niqab or to take off the bikini without any law backing that, without any law backing that up, without any law uh, supporting the police people to do that, I find that difficult to believe. So I believe that for the police to take certain actions, I believe uh, they are doing that according to what the law says. So if you have been asked to uh, not put on uh, the boca or, or the bikini or the niqab in certain places, in certain locations, I believe it's, it's very understandable that uh, the police are going to try to enforce the law in order for such people not to be able to do it freely. So if certain laws prevent you from uh, putting it on, so I see no reason why you should put it on and try to uh, challenge the law. I believe that is totally unacceptable. I believe right now, in the uh, uh, according to the civilization we have right now, in order for you to be able to communicate to people effectively, there is a need for you to see uh, the face of those you are communicating with. There is a need for you to, you know, know how the communication is going. Just by looking at their facial expression, you can tell their mood, you can tell how the communication is going. So I totally understand uh, Douglas Murray's point of view. So i also like to hear your comment based on the facts and the points Douglas have stated in this video. Keep the comments coming. Let's get the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day. Thank you.